Welcome back, everybody. My next guest is the star, creator, and writer of the HBO series, I May Destroy You. Bob found the line that separated him from everything else. Rather than crossing it, he tiptoed on it. And he experienced this feeling of being on the boundary, on the border, right on the line of being neither in one place or another, and saw how in this gray area, where nothing was quite clear, no one could be clear. We can't articulate, we fuddle our words, we couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was he did that we felt was so wrong. So yeah, Bob thinks you're crazy. Yeah, he thinks he's the smartest man in the room who knoweth all things, because Bob has observed the detail. We have to start observing, Bob. Please welcome to A Late Show, Michaela Cole. Michaela, Hi, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Where am I catching you in the world? Are you over in the UK or are you here in the States? I am in London, in the UK, yes. Well, thank you for staying up late then. It's my pleasure. This is about, I'm probably going to start falling asleep in about half an hour. So you've caught me just at my, me too. just relaxed. Me yeah. too. We're even. You too? What, I'll, I'll what race you. What time is it where you are? What did it say? What time is it where you are? J uh, just past my bedtime, I promise you. <laughs> I I'm, see. I'm much older than you are. Now, I May Destroy <laughs> You, which you created, wrote, directed, and starred in, was released up last summer, and was it was an instant critical, critical success. Uh, amazing things in, in the reviews. HBO's I May Destroy You might be the best TV show of the year. I May Destroy You, HBO's new unforgettable, unmissable drama. HBO's I May Destroy You is the most astonishing show on TV right now. It, it's getting all this incredible praise during COVID quarantine. Could you feel it? Or is that all just happening at a great distance, like a choir singing in a distant room? Yes, very much. You know, HBO actually sent me this uh, framed um, poster with my face, you know, as Arabella and all of these captions from these like wonderful journalists. And I remember sort of opening the package and looking at all the quotes and my head was just spinning because it life is so small. You know, I wake up. I go for a run, um, I order in my groceries, I watch TV, I go to sleep. So to see it, it was like, this is weird. Um, there is a disconnect. I think it's uh, definitely because of the, the pandemic. The, the show is, it's based on your own story. And what was it like to take your own trauma and... Mm -hmm turn that into a story that you share with other people? Was that, was that difficult or was it in some ways empowering? Uh, I think it was both of those things. It starts off really small when you, I'm sure you know, when you make a television before it is launched to the world. In fact, before your cast even gather for a table read, there's a very intimate year and a half of writing where you are creating something and sharing it with HBO. And that's two people, it's Amy and Amy, and it's my co-producers, Phil, and peers at the BBC. So it's this tiny hub, and so everything feels really intimate. And then there's the next phase where the cast have your script and the crew have your script, and now 200 people are reading it. Then it goes to the world and it's uh, millions. So it feels quite gradual in sharing something so personal and it is still hard and it is still trippy that something that uh, caused a lot of pain and that is still sometimes a surprise to me, the fact that it even happened, it's it's sometimes trippy that like so many people are um, hearing about it and watching it. But there's something about making a show about your pain. It's almost as if new memories replace old ones or sort of stand beside painful memories. And so whenever you think about the pain, you think about the beautiful experience of making the show and what a joy it was and how many opportunities it gave to other people as well as myself. Is, is this true that before you 
Uh, every time before you start writing a project, you Google how to write a television series? Yes, yes. I mean, I've only made the three. This is the, th the third show. Only but three? Yes, every time. Well, you know, um, some people have been in this game for a very long time. So. <laughs> I know, I know, but there's a lot. That's, that's, that's a lot. So what do you learn? Like, why do you have to re-Google it every time? Because obviously I forget. So now you're asking me what I learn, and again, I don't remember, which means I'm going to have to Google it again. I think I'm learning some sort of basic, like, um, three-act structure, and the hero has to learn something. And first we begin with, uh, we set up the life, and then we meet a problem. It's some basic stuff that I think other people learned when they were writing in writer's rooms or when they went to school to learn about writing. I've never done either of those things, so I have to keep sort of learning this elementary, like, wiki how to write. Well, you're doing a great job, so post some links for the rest of us who could use a refresher course as well. Just type it into Google or dot, dot, go, whatever your search engine of choice is, AOL, whatever you use, ask Jeeves how to write a TV show. You can also do, like, how to write a comedy, how to write a drama. It's all there. Well, thanks so much for being here. Pleasure. I May Destroy You is available now on HBO. Michaela Cole, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Kings of Leon.